Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be talking about how to construct a really straightforward Sankey diagram. Now these are really useful in physics to show energy transfers, or more specifically useful energy outputs. So we'll, we're going to take an example, we're going to do two. We're going to take the first example of, let's say, a simple lamp. Now there's going to be electrical energy coming into the lamp, so we need to plug that in. And we're going to lose some energy as heat. And we're going to get an output, a useful energy of light coming from that. So we need to draw a diagram to represent the sort of the energy transfers, but also the numbers in joules, the amount of energy that each transfer is using. So let's start on the left. Let's pretend there are, let's say, 100 joules of energy coming in. Now the numbers clearly, I'm just making up, I'm just keeping it very simple just for the purpose of this diagram. So let's say you do one. What we're going to end up with is a very big block arrow. So we're pretending that there's an input of 100 joules. So in this diagram, each kind of separate square is representing 20 joules for me. So this is going to be... Our 100 joules input, and we said it's a lamp, so this is this could be electrical energy coming in. And it doesn't matter about the size of the arrow, so long as everything is proportional. So let's continue this along here. So here's our arrow. Now we're going to pretend that 40 joules is lost simply as heat. Now length of arrow going down doesn't matter, it's the width. So let's have a start of an arrow coming down here. Now if we're saying each square on this was 20 joules, 40 would be two squares. So we need it two squares wide. What we do is just draw an arrow coming off that is, if you have a look here, two squares wide, which on here represents 40 joules. So 100 joules came in, but this is a 40 joule of energy loss via heat. Because we don't want heat as a useful energy output from the lab, we want light. So, because we've lost 40, we have 60 remaining, and we need to show that on the diagram. So our arrow, our top arrow, we can just continue drawing along like this. But now we need to go up to accommodate for that 40 joule loss. So notice we've now got this period, this size block here, which is 60 joules. And then we continue the arrow across like so. So visually we can simply see that we started with 100 joules, what, 5 squares worth. And now we're continuing with 3 squares worth, 60 joules having lost 40. And let's say that that 60 joules is purely going into light energy. We can just end the Sankey diagram by making this into a final arrowhead. And say that this is... 60 joules of light energy and this is our useful output. So we had 100 joules input, we had a 40 joule loss of heat, we got a 60 joules useful output. And if we were to work out the efficiency Energy efficiency is useful output divided by total input times 100. So that would be 60 out of the 100 times 100. So this whole process has been 60% efficient. And that is literally how you draw one of these Sankey diagrams. Just really simple block arrow proportionally making it smaller and smaller with every loss. So let's do a second example just with two losses so you can see what that would look like. 
So let's, again, let's stick with five squares just to keep it simple. One, two, three, four, five. And we're going to pretend we've got 25 joules input. And we'll say this is electrical. So let's say this is a hairdryer. We're going to draw a Sankey diagram to show any transfers in the hairdryer. So we have 25 joules coming in. Now, you sometimes lose energy as kinetic energy, moving energy, because in the hairdryer, when you turn it on, you get some movement of the fan inside. So the 25 joules, let's say we've lost 10. So each one of these squares here, each one of these squares, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, each one is to represent five. So if we've lost 10, remember, it doesn't matter about the length, but it matters about the width. So if we're losing 10, it would need to be 5, 10, it needs to be two squares wide. And we just draw an arrow head. And we can say that is a 10 joule loss. As, and we said it would be kinetic. So because we've lost 10, we're continuing with 15 joules. So we need to draw the arrow. Apologies, I know this isn't the straightest line, but so we need to draw an arrow that's now, in terms of thickness, representing 15 joules. That's three squares. Now let's say we lose five joules of sound, because you know when you turn the hairdryer on it can be quite noisy. So again, doesn't matter how long the arrow is, but five joules would be one square. So we can draw an arrowhead, and we can say this is a five joule loss as sound. So that would leave 10 joules left. And that 10 joules can go on to produce heat. I say produce heat, could be turned into heat rather from our original 25 joules input. So we can extend this arrow across to here. Bring this up. And continue across. Notice it's two squares wide now, which would suggest 10 joules. We can put a final arrowhead on. And this could be our final 10 joule output as heat energy, which is what we ultimately want from our hairdryer. And again, if we worked out the efficiency, we'd have the output 10 over the total input times 100. And that would come to 40%. So this process is 40% efficient. And that is how you draw the simple Sankey diagram for this transfer. It's all about just the proportion and width of the arrows. Okay, hope that helps.